I am Sifu Andrew Platt from Little Iron Heaven UK and today we're going to go through the next in the Flashing Hand Silver series. So in this, this one we're going to do the brown belt. Okay, so we had the white belt, the yellow belt, we had the blue belt with the jump shuffles and now we're going to do the, um, sorry, the green belt, the green belt today um, with the uh, level four. So with the, with the level four and the green belt, uh, we're going to work on uh, 45 degree shuffles. Okay, so we've got power from the jump shuffles from last time and we're generating power and force here. So what we're going to do next is we're going to use this and we're going to put everything together and work on a practical application for the shuffles. Now, this is a little bit of pre-movement as well, but it's a very good set of drills. Now, you might find you won't need the cross on this one. The cross is very important in all the flashing hands moves, but as we start to move freely, the cross will need to move with our bodies because the centre line should always be facing through our angle. So as we turn, um, the cross will turn with us. So without having a piece of equipment that moves the cross on the floor as we, as we walk around, then you know, it's not going to be possible to use. So with all the drilling you've already done, you should be able to uh, use the cross uh, without actually having it drawn on the floor now. You should have the correct angles and footwork at all times, which again is why the shuffles are very important. And if you can do um, 500 to 1,000 jump shuffles perfectly in a shuffle position, then you will have no trouble 45 degree shuffling in a proper technique way. Because as soon as we start to take the angles out of it, it's easy for it to become sloppy and um, lose correct technique. So make sure you do it slow to begin with, then fast, and then go back to the slow and just double check that everything's in the correct place. Um, here is a practical application, so this can be used for fighting. This is what the shuffles have been designed for. Uh, there's two ways we're going to do this today, so I'll show you the first way. The first way is we start in a standard position here. We're going to step out with the right foot, the front foot, and then we turn at 45 degrees into a shuffle with the left foot, you see? So we turn 45 degrees here with the right foot, move back a little bit, here 45 degrees with the right foot, and then we turn with the left foot, so one, two. We don't just jump into it like this, we go one, two, this way. One, two, and you see how the weight turns. Naturally, our back hand is coming out as the left foot turns. So if we use our front hand here on the, on the step here and turn here, this comes out this way. If you've, if you've worked with us and not just on, online, then you will have done the browns, and the browns show you this move so, you know, straight from day one. This is a very important move for splashing hands, this 45 degree shuffle, uh, which is why the forms are, are so usable in the system. So, as we step out here, we go one and two. Keep the hands up at all times. I'll show you the techniques for the hands later. Again, one and two. Now, to follow this movement up, you would then step forwards with a straight foot and turn the right foot in. You can bring the foot in a little bit more because depending on how far you step, you don't want to be left with an open guard between the knees. You need to bring the knees up. So it's okay to step this way and move the foot in. Alternatively, it is okay to keep it short, like this. Depends on your distance between you and the target. You can work here, you can work on the spot, you can go 45 backwards as well. You don't always have to go forwards if you don't need to. Like a back shuffle here can be turned into a back 45 degree shuffle here if needed because it's stronger, it's more structurally correct and the shoulders will turn with it to generate internal power. Alternatively, you could turn this into a jump shuffle exercise. Here, we're making sure the right foot stays on both lines. So if you had a set of lines we have here, you would step here, and then this way, you would step here, and then that one, you would step there. So you're using the same two lines all the time to make sure the distances are the same. So then we've got 45 degree jump shuffles. You can also do 45 degree jumping drop shuffles, which will be a step and down, step and down this way. So again, combining with the last um, blue belt system. So again, let's take a look at some of the movements for this. So if you were looking at blocks, you would use the back hand here because it's more powerful. You're not going to block. You could block here with this one for an outer block, but I prefer to block with this one. So it's usually in the case here, covering the face here, good shuffle, 45 degrees. As we step, we block here, and we use this power to, to generate from the hands. One, two. Three, alternatively, we could go back one, two, three. Okay, so we can go up and down in these drills. Jab punch, you could start with a jab and just go here, one, and step two. And the second hand, the, well, the first hand in this, the jab hits as the second foot hits the floor, but starts moving 
as the foot starts to move here and two. So we start moving together, we finish moving together. There's no one, two, or no one, two. See the feet move together, one, two, one, two, one, two. If we turned it into a jab punch, we could step one, two, one, two. One, two. Now this is better because we use the nearest hand to the opponent first and we go out so it looks more like this. We sell. Yeah, nice and easy. And again, two. This way, nice and simple. If you do a shuffle, you can step in with the other block here and a jab punch here. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. For example. So you can play with this. You could go one, two, three. You could block here. Jab punch here, uppercut here. I'll show you again. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, so one, two, three. And jab punch again at the end. You can come up with millions of drills for this. You could add up combinations. In your class, you could make a list. Make a list, write it down, and perform it. I'd go one. Okay, shuffle, jab punch, inner block, uppercut. Forearm strike, so on, add one on, let them do it ten times, add another one on. Let them do it ten times, add two on. Yeah, keep going. And then see if they can remember muscle memory, all these different drills. Next time you do it, scrap that list, start again, write a new one out. Don't get used to the same combinations. Alternatively, you can just free it. One, two. And then the next time you just do something else here. Or here. Three. And you go whatever you feel is right. The more shuffles you do, the better you're going to get a repeat attack. You don't just want to hit once and stop. You want to hit, 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 hit. Maybe start a timer, 20 second timer. And then as soon as the timer goes, you move. And you don't stop till the timer goes. If you stop during the timer before it buzzes, you stop, you do 20, 30 press ups, and you do it again. All right, so make a game of it in your head, training. Yeah, play with it. It has to be fun, but at the same time, serious. So make sure you get the most out of it. Now, the second way of doing a 45 degree shuffle, this is very, very important. This is my favourite way. It's fast, it generates even more power, which should only be done if you can do the step out 45 degree shuffle first. This is a reverse 45 degree shuffle. So if you've done reverse shuffle before, which you would have done in class from level one, then we will teach you the reverse 45 degree shuffle. So in this one, we turn here. So instead of going to the right, we're still in the right side stance, but we're going to go to the left. Now, it might look like I'm moving two feet at once, but really it's one, two, like a shuffle. Like a shuffle does here. So really, it's more like a shuffle. See how we're on the right side out, but the left foot is solid. So we're just going in and then stepping out at 45. And then we can step back. Yeah? Very, very easy to do. And again, this generates very much power from the waist. Like the shuffle is one here. Should be here. <laughs> This way, you see the power we get, the speed. It makes you have more spirit, more focus than just going like this. Yeah, okay, that's good. But this, here you get more speed, more power. With a punch jab, this is a very good one to do a punch jab. Again, you could do inner block here on the first one, because it's the first move, the initiation. So if someone's in your face and you, and, you, know, you think we're going to attack you, you need to be fast, you need to be fast. You don't have time to do this or this. If, if it comes just in, this way, and just look, use this one to generate power, to knock their attack clean out of the way, and then boom. Secondly, if you're the one that needs to initiate the attack, you use this one to make a devastating first attack, the rest follow on, and then, you know, the game is in your hands. So, uh, let's do it with a punch jab here. Um, so again, left side out. You can't really do it with a jab. You could do it with a jab here, like this, but you can't do it with a jab punch because your waist is turning the wrong way. Just like you, you, you can shuffle here and here, but it, it doesn't work because it's almost one movement and not two. Because when we do shuffle, jab, punch, it's shuffle, jab, unshuffle, punch. But we're only half shuffling, so it must only be the jab. So you go here, <laughs> this way, and hit, this, very powerful attack. This. Try this on the bike as well. After you do this, here you can follow up with a step down, ah, this way, punch. So you could do jab, punch like this, <laughs> This way, one, two, hitting the same plenty of time. Yeah? Um, you could do punch jab, like I say, with two punches to one move. Here, this way. 
It's very good one for a hammer fist. You'll absolutely destroy somebody if you use this in a fight. So here, and then punch jab this way. So left, right, right, left. I'll show you again. This way. Or you can go one, two, uppercut. Three, this way. Yeah, so you can really play with this, but it's really an entry level thing to into a fight. You could use it if you're blocking somebody here, this way, and then suddenly you need to find an opening, then go. Let's say they overcommit to a, to a roundhouse and you blocked it here, and you may have got a couple of hits in anyway, but they have a really big opening, make advantage of that and really use that like a reverse shuffle to absolutely annihilate one area specifically. And again, you're not losing speed, you're just generating more power. All right, so they're, they're very good ones to do. Again, you can use for every technique, try and explore, but you should be able to use both combinations with every technique you've used and make different combinations. So you go shuffle, 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 reverse shuffle, yeah? Um, always 45 on this level. Uh, don't forget the old, old drills as well, we'll add these in. You can really spend a good six months working on these um, endlessly without, without getting bored. Um, yeah, there's really no need for you to, uh, to you know, really get, get annoyed with these. There's so much you can learn from this. And use it on the bag, use it on, on the pads and two-man drills. Um, and really play with it. But you must have spirit in these. It's not just a one, two, it's got to have spirit in each one. It's like you have to have the mental uh, spirit of having been in a fight. So you need to be here, let's say you're doing the time again, or someone's ready to say go for a list of movements. You should be ready, you should be ready to go. And then they say go and then you explode. <laughs> yeah, and you fire out. And again, every single one should have a foot movement. There shouldn't be a point where you're not moving the feet. If you move, if you stop moving the feet, your hands will stop moving, and that's game over. Either the buzzer's gone, or you've been hit, or he's down on the ground. Those are the only two reasons. Okay, so yeah, just to clarify, this is our uh, green belt level, our fourth belt level, um, and uh, yeah, so the next level, our brown belt, we're going to start working on something different. Within this system as well, there is also forms. These are the sections. Okay, the sections are broken down versions of browns and advanced browns and it's a more simpler pattern but have a lot to teach you as well. Uh, the sections aren't as well practiced in um, most systems of splashing hands um, because, well, uh, those are simply forgotten about because they're in other parts of the forms. But it's important to go back now. The, the sections teach us to go back to our other forms and teach us how to generate more power, more, more spirit and more, more practicality. Um, so yes, yeah, so if you do come into class on a Tuesday night, then you will learn the sections, or if you do the course, a uh, five day, one week course, you will also learn the sections for that as well. And again, you would get your certificate for the, uh, the green belt and you would go, go home and practice and come back when you're ready to learn the next stage. Uh, so yeah, all in all, you'll do at least 25 hours work on here before you're thinking about the next level. Um, I mean, really there's no reason why you should do more, but that is the bare minimum to get it into your body. So the next level will be usable. Because if you can't do this, then you won't be able to do the next level. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Um, yeah, I thought we'd have a change of scenery as well. Uh, it's all good. So I uh, hope you take care and uh, have a good training session. Goodbye.